But let's disregard that and let's carry on. So today I'm going to be doing a uh, little set discussion of all the cards that have been released in XY7 Bandit Ring, which is out in Japan, I believe, June 20th. Let's just check the date. Yep, June 20th, um, before the Arc Din of Rings Hooper movie debuts. And then over in America and Europe, we will get this set on August 12th. So not all of the cards have been released yet, so we're just going to focus on the cards that have been released. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of discuss the Pokemon, that I, the, the cards even, that I feel are going to make a big impact on the state of play once this set integrates itself with the rest of our current standard format, or the standard format after World Championships. So let's get into it. We'll start with the Pokemon. So the first one I want to talk about is this Vileplume. Now Vileplume is stage 2, 130 HP, has an ability called Frustrating Pollen. As long as this Pokemon is in play, both you and your opponent can't play item cards. And then for two grass and one colours, it does Solar Beam for 70 damage. So, the interesting bit about Vileplume is it basically acts as a sit-on-the-bench version of Seismitoad EX, doesn't do any damage. So I feel that this is going to be extremely good with some of the other cards that I'm going to talk about. Um, this is one of the cards that I'm probably going to be using in a couple of grass decks that I've been coming up with because solely because of this set. So I feel that Vileplume is going to be extremely good. Um especially in the deck lockdown decks where you you sit on one Pokemon to attack and you use others to shut off ability to shut off what your opponent can do. So for example, you could build like a supporter base deck with um, so instead of using items you use vile you, you you have vile plume on the bench to lock out both players for using item cards. The important bit here is if you're playing something like um, a Mega Sceptile deck or anything that uses a spirit link, and you want to slow your opponent down, get the tool on the Pokemon first, and then you can evolve into Vileplume. So, this is going to be really good alongside stuff like Nine Tails, which will stop. Stadium's coming into play, this will be good alongside Bayonet, which, even though tools are classed as items, if your opponent has managed to get items into play, they won't have any effects because of Bayonet. So... I feel that Vileplume is going to be a really, really good addition. Next, uh, Ariados, another one that I'm rather excited about. Uh, stage 1, 70 HP. The ability is Poison Nest. Um, once during your turn, before you attack, you may use this ability. Both active Pokemon are now poisoned, except for Grass Pokemon. So, again, just a really, really decent... Pokemon to have on the bench where you are effectively using a whole string of abilities to just make your opponent as miserable as possible. So as we saw with the Vile Plume, shut off items, use Ariados to shut off um, or use Ariados to poison the Pokemon. You could have Dragalgi from Flashfire which will stop your opponent's Pokemon from retreating if they're poisoned. So you're basically just creating a lockdown situation where they can't get out of it at all. So there's not really much else to say. And then for one grass, one colour does corner. For 30 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. But if you're running this alongside Dragalgi, you won't actually be needing to use it to attack. Simple. Next, we have Celebi. So we haven't seen a Celebi since. Uh, Dragon's Exalted, if I'm correct. If not, then feel free to leave a comment down below. So this Celebi has um, the ancient trait Theta Stop, prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. So anything that targets it, so for example, um, it can't be affected by Pyro's Flare Command, it can't be affected by Ludicolo's Captivating Rhythm, can't be affected by anything like that. So effectively, it's a bit like Omega Barrier, but just for the abilities of your opponent's Pokemon. So it has the ability Time Skip. When this Pokemon is knocked out, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent does not take a prize card and shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. Pretty good. Pretty good. But I don't like the whole flip a coin thing because you're basically risk you're you're saying, well, I could either let my opponent take the prize or I could gamble. And I would feel a lot worse if I lost the gamble. 
for my opponent to take a prize card than I would just saying, just take the prize, I don't care. Um, and then for one grass, it does Sparkle Mine, place one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon. So there's a whole lot of this placing damage counters on your opponent's actives and your opponent's benched Pokemon recently with stuff like Crobat, Golbat, Greninja, Absol moving stuff around. There's quite a lot of that stuff going on. So it'll be interesting to see what is done with Celebi, if anything is done with it at all. Moving on, um, we get the first EX and Mega of the set. So we'll talk about Sceptile EX, 170 HP, basic. One Grass Energy does Sleep Poison for 10. Flip a coin of head to your opponent's active Pokemon is now Sleep and Poison. So it's, it's a hit in the Toxic Laser. But it doesn't guarantee the poison. You have to flip for both the special conditions. But I don't think that's what it's going to be used for. I think it could be used for the next attack. Um, for one grass and one colourless, Assassin Claw, if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, this attack does 70 more damage. Now, special condition, so it, it could either be asleep, confused, paralysed, poisoned or burned, and it will do not 60 but 130 damage instead. So, with this and Ariados that we looked at earlier, you are guaranteed to do 130 plus 10 from the poison damage, which will take it up to 140. So that's pretty decent. And then we have the first Mega of the set, Mega Sceptile EX, which is which is one, which is probably a deck that will come about be solely because of the set. Um, has Theta Stop, again, preventing all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. Then it's attack for one Grass and one Colorless. Jagged Saber does 100. You may attach up to two Grass Energy cards from your hand to your benched Pokemon in any way you like. If you do, remove all damage from each Pokemon you attach them to. This is basically, you do 100 and you can heal off all the damage onto two of your benched Pokemon. This is like a double max potion without any drawbacks, which is why I feel that this is going to be extremely good. And even if you're not healing, it's still really good for energy acceleration. So that's one that I'm particularly excited about. Next up we have Virizion. Um, basic Pokemon, 110 HP. One Grass is Rescue. Search your discard pile for two Pokemon, show them to your opponent and put them into your hand. Now this could be really good, say if you've discard, say if you battle compressed um, two Pokemon that you need to put on your bench, you can use Virizion to rescue them from your discard pile, put them into your hand, have them ready for the next turn. And then for Two Grass, uh, Prize Counter, does 40 damage initially, and if you have more prize cards left than your opponent, this attack does another 80 damage. So it's, this is sort of a good card if you're losing, you're not in a good situation, you just want to kind of start poking for a bit of damage, Verizion will be useful for that. Now we move on to the next type, only one so far has been revealed, and that is Entei, which is one that I was particularly excited about. Um, 130 HP. Um, this one has Theta Double. This Pokemon can have two Pokemon tools attached to it. So you could have something like a Muscle Band and a Protection Cube, or a Muscle Band and even though it will rotate a Silver Bangle, you, the, the, the choices are endless in the combination you could have. So for its attacks, one Fire, one Colorless, Flame Barrier. It does 30, and then during your opponent's next turn, reduce all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's attacks by 30. So because of the double tool, you could have a muscle band and a hard charm. So then instead of doing 30 and blocking for 30, you can do 50 and block for 50 because of the hard charm on top of it. And then for two fire, two colorless, heat tackle does 130, flip a coin if heads, this Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. So again, muscle band makes it 150. Protection cube, you don't even have to flip the coin to prevent damage to itself. So even though I get loads of people saying it's a terrible card protection cube, why would you run it? Simple, because I don't want to tender, tender my Pokemon so then my opponent can knock them out in the next turn. There's no point to it at all. Um, then the next EX is Kiram. Kiram EX, 180 HP. Two water, one colorless, frozen world. This attack does 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon simple so this is a bit like um 
the old Kirum, uh, the non-EX version with Glaciate. Same energy cost, actually. Um, doing 30 to everything. This, I feel, will be a lot better. Um, this will work really well alongside stuff like Mega Gallade um, and Mega Tyranitar, which we will get to very soon in this video. And then for three water, one colorless, Ice Calibur, which I think is an excellent attack name, 130 damage. Discard an energy attached to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't attack. Now, because of that effect afterwards that they can't attack, they can easily just switch out. So if it was some if if it was another one saying, oh this po you know, if it was this Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn, probably be a little bit better. But again, switch and escape rope are still are still well and truly out there. Um Jolteon. Now we don't have an actual image for it, but you can just see here. Um but yeah, so it's a stage one with 90 HP, um, has the ability electric effect. All stage one Pokemon are now lightning as well as their original type. So if you're running a stage one deck, all of your stage ones and your opponent's stage ones, if they're running stage ones, become lightning as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. And there is a particular card that I want to discuss when we get to it. And then for one lightning, two colorless, thunder blast, um, 80 damage, and then you discard one energy attached to this Pokemon. Then we move on to Ampharos EX. Um, 170 HP basic for one colorless Thunder Rod, or th I think it's been retranslated to Thunder Road. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may attach as many lightning energy you find there as you like to this Pokemon. And then you shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck. So it's, it's a combination of um, Trainer's Mail, and Togekiss uh, Delta Evolution from Roaring Skies. So, but you only have to, you only look at the top four, which is okay. It's not brilliant, but I'm sure something decent could come about of it. And then for two lightning, two colorless, Sparkling Tail does, sorry, Sparking Tail does 100 damage. And then this attack's damage isn't affected by weakness, resistance, or any other effects on the defending Pokemon. So again, this, it could be a decent counter to Pyro, even though nobody plays Pyro anymore, because it is, it is pretty much a dead card. However, this will almost get over Beautifly, which I think is a Pokemon that people will start using because of its new um, safeguard, we'll call it, you know, it's safeguard, even though it's like miraculous scales or something. But um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed with um, Ampharos. And then we look at Mega Ampharos EX, which I'm surprised is not a dragon type. Uh, so 220 HP, um, no ancient trait, which is, you know, it's fine. Um, and then for two lightning, two colors does Exavolt, 120. You may make this attack do 50 more damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. If you do, this Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. It's not bad, actually, when you think about it. Considering, you know, that Mega Rayquaz is still out there, it's still a, th you know, it's still a big threat to a lot of decks, or to nearly every deck. So I think Mega, you know, Mega Ampharos doing 170 and paralyzing is actually pretty decent. You know, that takes care of Evil Tile in one hit, takes care of Seismitoad, um, takes care of, it takes care of a lot of things. And, I, and by that, I do, generally do mean a lot of things. Even the 30 damage to itself, it seems worth it at the end of the day. So, again, I think Amph Mega Ampharos will be something to definitely look out for. And then we move on to Psychic. And for the first time in goodness knows how long, we have an unknown back in the game again. Um, 60 HP basic. Everyone knows that it does hidden power, so we don't need to talk about the attack. The ability, however, is the bit that I'm most interested in. Uh, last will. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may discard this Pokemon and all cards attached to it, and it doesn't count out, doesn't count as knocking it out, so your opponent doesn't take a prize for it, and then you can draw a card. Which is really good, so if you need a bit of draw power, you can just discard these guys and draw four. It's really good. Um, go Lurk. Go luck, go luck, go luck. Now, this is the one that I was very, very interested in and very excited about because of how much you can do with this card. So, 130 HP, stage one, 
Feature stop. Prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. The ability, double type. As long as this Pokemon is in play, it is both psychic and fighting. Let that sink in. We have not seen cards like this for a very, very long time, where they are two types at the same time. Golurk is now two types at the same time. And because it's stage one, it benefits also from Jolteon. So it doesn't have two types, but it actually has three types. So you can be hitting for Psychic, Fighting, and Lightning all in the same attack, which makes it extremely good. And it benefits from stuff like Rough Seas for healing. It benefits from Fighting Stadium for doing extra damage to your opponent's EX. It, you know, you can use one energy less to use its attack with Dimension Valley. There's so many things that you can do with Golurk. And then for four colorless, superpower does 80 damage. You may make this attack do 40 more damage. If you do, this Pokemon does 20 damage to itself. So against Mega Rayquaza, let's yeah, let's take Mega Rayquaza for example. Say you have a strong energy, a mystery energy, and then a double colorless, because you know it can take mystery, strong, and the new special energy that we will get to at the end of this video. So so that'd be 80 plus 20 from the strong energy plus 40. So that's 140. Muscle Band makes it 160. Fighting Stadium makes it 180. Multiply that by 2 for 360 minus the 20 from the resistance is 340. That is a very, very, very dead Rayquaza EX. But even, I think this will be a lot better being played alongside Dimension Valley because then you only need to pay... Uh, three energy instead of four. Um, but I don't... I mean, the 20 to itself isn't bad, which I guess you could use rough seas for, because you, you could just basically say, oh yeah, that damage never happened. Never happened. Um, and then we get to the main of the... sort of the mascot Pokemon of the set, Hooper EX, which I... and looking at it now... I was very surprised that they didn't do Hooper, uh, Hooper EX and then Hooper Unbound EX. I was kind of hoping they would do that, but, I, but with that, I'm guessing that Hooper Unbound EX would probably be the single most broken thing in the history of the game. But the ability makes it extremely, extremely broken. So it's ability, Bandit Ring. Once during your turn before you attack, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may use this ability. Search your deck for up to three Pokemon EX, excluding Hooper, because otherwise that would be really broken. Show them to your opponent and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. Three Pokemon EX. Doesn't say you can't take Megas. This is going to be in everything. This is going to be a really decent tech in Mega Rayquaza decks, because then, because this basic, this... This replaces Winona, without a doubt. This replaces Winona, because you could get Mega Ray, Shaman, and maybe another Rayquaza. You can get them all down. You, you Shaman, you draw more. You can just keep going with Hooper EX. It is monstrously good. But the only downside is, is that if you've got Skyfield, and this takes up just one space, Mega Rayquaza fails to knock out stuff like Mega Agron, Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre, um, Mega Tyranitar... It doesn't manage to do that. It doesn't even manage to knock out anything with 220. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. But I'm sure that someone out there will figure something out for it. Uh, Machamp EX. Oh, why did they have to make this? It's. I'm. So, I'm sorry, but if you know, if you're watching this and you're a fan of Machamp, I'm not fond of Machamp EX. I. I I want it to be better, but I don't think it will. Okay, so for one fighting, one colorless does thrash, twenty damage times the number of uh, times the number of damage counters on it on this Pokemon, and then it's now confused. Which is, you know, it's okay, and I guess it leads on to the second attack, Crazy Hammer for two fighting, one colorless, Crazy Hammer, eighty damage. And if it's affected by a special condition, it does 80 more damage, then remove all special conditions from this Pokemon. So I guess this could actually work with Ariados, you know, poison, poison itself, then use Crazy Hammer, then remove the poison damage. So m maybe, maybe it might be decent alongside Ariados. We don't know yet, we'll just have to wait and see. 
And then we come to the EX that I personally am the most excited about. We'll start with Tyranitar EX. 180 HP, retreat cost of 4. I can live with that. So for 2... I'm sorry, 1 Darkness, 2 Colorless, it does 60 damage with Head Smash, no effect. And then Ground Break, 2 Darkness, 2 Colorless, does 130 and does 10 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. That bit I'm not worried about, you could just use something like a Mountain Ring, it's not a big deal. And then we come to Mega Tyranitar EX, a massive 240 HP. It has the Ancient Trait Theta Double, so this Pokemon can have two Pokemon tools attached to it. Just let that sink in. Two tools on a Mega, that is ridiculous. I'm sorry, but that is ridiculous. And then for two Darkness, two Colorless, Destroyer King, best attack name ever. 110 damage to start with, and then it does 60 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So, basically, Mega Titar Bat is going to be a monstrously powerful deck. It's going to be one of the best decks coming out of Bandit Ring, in my honest opinion. I am seriously considering running a 3-3, th uh, not even a 3-3, three, three, a 4-3 four, three line, a 4-4 four, four, or 4-3 four, line of Mega Tyranitar and just bats everywhere. You know, this could even be decent with Greninja, but again, you have, because because Seismitoad X is still a thing, and don't know how long it will be a thing for, we're just going to have to wait and see. But I get the strong feeling that this is going to be great with um, the Crobat line. Um, of easily the one of the most powerful most powerful cards i've ever seen and i can imagine people are going to go oh i wonder how much damage i can get off of this you know 21 damage counters on a mega rayquaza ex so that's 110 plus 60 times 21 that's um let me think 20 times 60 is 1200 so, so that's 1,260 plus 110, so that's 1,003, so for 4 energy you're doing 1,370 damage, what the actual hell, is it necessary, no, but is it fun, you bet your ass it is. And then we kind of wind down, and uh, Sableye, Sableye, so basic Pokemon, 70 HP, 1 energy, Captivating Eye, for one darkness energy, choose a supporter card in your opponent's discard pile and use it as the effect of this attack. So it could be an effect of Lysander, it could be the effect of Pokemon Fan Club, it could even be the effect of Tierno if someone is, you know, not clever enough. Is if well, okay, that's a bit unkind. If someone has had no choice but to run a Tierno in their deck, you could just go, hmm, I fancy three extra cards. So this basically becomes Kangaskhan EX if a Tierno is in your opponent's discard pile and just go, mm, triple draw. And then for two energy, one darkness, one color, silent placement, put three damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. So this could actually have some synergy with uh, Mega Tyranitar. We don't know yet, but it is what it is. Um, next EX is Lugia. Lugia EX, 170 HP. Um, I'll be honest, this is just another Mewtwo. Two colorless energy. Aero Ball, 20 damage times the number of energy cards attached to both active Pokemon. So this is this is the new Mewtwo EX that we are getting. So this will be run alongside, you know, this could be a tech in Mega Rayquaza decks, or it could, it could, it could just become its own deck. That's how good it is. It could even be run, run alongside um, Evil Tali EX. So, and then for, oh, sorry, I'll get the image back up again. For four colorless energy, Deep Hurricane, 80 damage, and if there's any stadium in clay, in, in clay, if there's any stadium card in play, it does 70 more damage, and then you discard that stadium card. So again, this could be a really good counter for stadium-based decks where you've got a stadium that's affecting you, and you're just not putting up with it, and you just go deep hurricane, 150, pop the stadium card. Happy as Larry. Um. Then we get onto the trainers. No clear image for Paint Roller, but it's pretty fun. Discard a stadium, stadium card in play, then draw one card. It's not bad. Um, Eco Arm. Um, shuffle three Pokemon tools from your discard pile back into your deck. 
Um, so this, it, it could negate stuff like startling Megafiron. Um, this probably would be a lot, you know, I can see this being heavily used in expanded formats um, with decks like uh, Tooldrop Trubbish um, and Toolbox Sigilith as well. Just a load of relatively decent stuff. Um, Lucky Helmet. This is interesting. So we have a new helmet. Not the rocky one, but the lucky one. Um, so it's a Pokemon tool. When this, when the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack, draw two cards. It's not bad. You know, you could hook this up to any other Pokemon that can do, like, Thief Double, and instead of drawing two when you get hit, you can draw four. It's not bad. Um, then we have the obvious Spirit Link, Sceptile, Ampharos, Tyranitar, Ace Trainer... Ace Trainer. So that so as you can as you've seen in this set already, there are a couple of cards that can help you if you're losing. Ace Trainer. Um, you can only play this card if you have more prize cards left than your opponent. Both players shuffle their hands into their deck. Then you draw six cards and your opponent draws three. This is basically a sort of a, a screw you version of N. Um, so I can see, definitely see myself playing at least one or two of these. It might even replace teammates if I'm completely honest. Because it's it's a draw power card. It I guarantee you it will replace teammates as sort of the oh no you've taken a pro you know oh no you've put yourself in the lead never mind ace trainer. So that's so that's that. Um, giant plant forest, the card that grass decks have needed so desperately. It's a stadium. Each player's grass Pokemon can evolve during the first turn and on the turn they were put into play. So I'll put that into perspective for you. Mega Sceptile can come out in turn one. Um, your Vile Plume can come out in turn one. Your Ariados can come out in turn one. Your basically your setup is all is basically ready by turn one. That's how good this card is going to be, in my opinion. It is anyway. Last two cards of the set. So far we have Flash Energy. So this is the Lightning, um, the Lightning Special Energy. Um, so this card can only be attached to a lightning Pokemon, so like we said earlier, with if you attach this to any stage 1 Pokemon while a Jolteon is in play, you can actually use this. Um, and then if it's discarded to anything other than a lightning Pokemon, discard it, and then while in play it proves, provides one lightning energy. So the, po the lightning Pokemon this energy is attached to has no weakness. So this is basically weakness policy plus a lightning energy, which is going to be extremely useful, in my opinion. And the last card in this first part of the set review, Bad Energy. So, remember when we said we've lost Rocky Helmet? We kind of have it back now. Um, so again, like all the other special energy cards we've been getting, it can only be attached to Darkness Pokemon. And it provides one Darkness Energy. When, this, when the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent, opponent's Pokemon EX's attack, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon EX. So this is sort of a counter to EX Pokemon that could be causing you some grief. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Just have to make do, I suppose. So that is everything that we that I can show you at the moment from XY7 Bandit Ring. Um, thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, and before I go, I am going to be doing a Q&A video on Saturday, which will be a Facebook exclusive. So get excited for that. Um, so if you want to leave some questions for the Q&A session, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. So, yeah, thanks again so much for watching. I've been Kieran from UKMon, and I will see you guys next time.